All right, so let's get started. And well, today we have uh, Murillo with us. Murillo, as he uh, shared um, a, a couple of minutes ago, he lives in Brazil. He is um, a microverse student. Well, he was a microverse student. He's now, you know, working. And um, well, I guess, Murillo, you are what we call now a micronaut, right? That's the name we found uh, for all the people who are in the microverse, like community and, and family. Awesome name. <laughs> So the the topic of the lunch I learned today is from chemical engineer to full stack developer, right? And we're going to be hopefully focusing a lot on on the process of transitioning because we we have a lot of uh, a lot of diversity in in the school in every possible way. But uh, in terms of like who you know what people were doing before you know they started like learning to code, but. Most people are actually people who had some previous career, right? And for some reason, they were not happy. They wanted to do something different. They found a new passion and they wanted to transition to new careers. So Murilo, I'll be asking you a lot of questions about that. And if everyone, anyone else uh, listening today is curious about how to transition to, you know, from being something else, like a chemical engineer in this case, to becoming a full stack web developer, well, it's a good time to like, you know, to learn from, from Marilla's um, experience. So uh, let me just start with a very simple question. Like Marilla, like, who are you? Tell us about you a little bit. Okay, I'll try being quick. Uh, so I'm Marilla, I, I live in Brazil in a city called Ribeirão Preto, uh, inside of the state of Sao Paulo. And okay, so when I was 15 years old, I, I I didn't start coding. I I was it was my first contact with coding. I learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and some PHP, but uh, I didn't focus on that. I, I didn't think it would be a thing here in the future. So actually, I learned, but then I when I I, I came to Macroverse. I didn't know anything at all. <laughs> so I don't consider it like something big. Uh, so when I was at high school, I decided to become a chemical engineer because I loved uh, mathematics and uh, chemistry and physics. So I, I, I started doing, uh, I went to college to, to graduate from for a chemical engineer. And uh, there I had some contact with Python and C, but also uh, it wasn't something too big. I, I just, I, I knew I, I, I was good at it. I, I, loved, the do, I loved doing all of the, the exercises that, that I needed to do, but I, I was focusing on the, at my graduation actually to become a chemical engineer. So after I graduated, I started working as a chemical engineer uh, for, I worked for two years and I was always uh, trying to automate my work. So I always loved doing some visual basic coding and I, I didn't have any classes. I just Googled everything and I learned everything from the, from the sources and uh, that that's something I, I I was always loving to do, you know. And after some time working as a chemical engineer, I realized that I I liked more uh, coding than uh, working as a chemical engineer. So that's why I quit my job and I joined Microverse to become a programmer because. That's my passion right now. I, I just I, I realized why I'm working as a chemical engineer. I I was doing some I, I was studying alone and doing some uh, what's the name of that app? Uh, I don't remember. I don't really remember the name, but I was trying to learn uh, some basics again, HTML and CSS, and doing some exercises out of my working hours and. I don't know, I just felt more pleasure doing that than working as a chemical engineer. Uh, plus, it was a more uh, hel a healthier thing to do because I was working at the industry and there were a lot of chemical products and contact with uh, uh, danger dangerous substances. So 
I was always afraid something would explode and I would like, you know, so that's, that's why uh, my, my health was getting a little bit uh, bad. So I was having some health issues and I decided to just uh, quit everything and, and become a programmer. That, that's why I, I quit. Oh, uh, I, 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 I knew you were working in oil filtration, but I, I hadn't thought about, you know, the, the consequences of that, right? Like, or the, or the, the potential risks uh, of that. So I, I, I can see that being an important factor yeah, in the that, decision. There were the health issues related to the oil contact with your hands. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you can uh, wear gloves and everything, but still you have some, uh, you, you can have some, issues, some health issues. Makes and sense. I was inside of, uh, uh, of um, uh, uh, how did you say? I, the place I was in the industry, it was very dangerous and everything could explode at any moment, you know? Uh, and <laughs> I don't know, I was just in a, gen a very dangerous place. And, no, it makes sense. Coding yeah. is definitely safer than, than that for sure. So yes. I... As I was saying before, I, I know a lot of people are in, you know, in this considering a transition, right? Whether that's because they found a new passion, they want to work on a different thing, they are not feeling like they're working on something that is safe for them or, you know, or healthy for them in any way. But it's often scary, right? Like to leave the comfort of, you know, uh, or the safety of a job that pays you that, you know, where you're doing what you know. Did you feel any fear, any doubts when you decided like, I'm gonna change careers? Yes, when I decided I wanted to switch careers, it was one year before I joined Microverse. It took me like one year of preparation to, to do this change. I had to save a lot of money. I had to talk to my family to so they can could understand I wouldn't be working and I would be studying for, for this. Um, and also I was in a good position at my work. And uh, if I left my, my work that at that time, it would make be a very big problem for the company. So I had to tell them before, and then they 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 had to find someone to substitute me. And there were, there were a lot of problems <laughs> involved. I had wow. to prepare. Well, all right. So a year of preparation. Uh, what, how did you approach your family? To, if you don't mind me asking, like, um, how was okay. it? Like, did, did you have to like, like well, tell, tell us about that process, which I know for a lot of people, it's um, often hard. Okay. So my family, my parents, they, they wouldn't understand at the beginning because I was leaving a very good position for them. And then I had to explain them that programming was the profession of the future. And a chemical engineer has a lot of potential in the future, but it will, it, it's not, when compared to programming, it's something that will disappear soon, you know? Uh, and a programmer will be here for decades or maybe centuries. I, I, I don't know that uh, there will always be a job for a programmer, you know? And that's, that's how uh, it was hard to, to make them believe in me. And uh, not, all, not only my parents, but I had a girlfriend and uh, then she became my fiance and now I'm married. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It was a lot, a lot of changes this past two years, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Best, the, the 2020 was, I think, the biggest year of my life. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, for example, I had to save a lot of money because I didn't want to depend on my parents. And I was getting married last, last year. So uh, uh, more expenses and I... I don't know. I just, I, it, it was like shooting in the dark, but not actually because I knew it was the right thing to do. And I explained it to my parents and my, my girlfriend at the time, but it depended on, on me, 
you know, all, only on me. I was doing my perverse work, but it only depended on me. Always. That, you know? that makes a lot of sense. And uh, I think it's, you know, many people join microverse or like, you know, any, any kind of school with also the financial support of the family. And that's always tricky, although necessary in many cases, because, you know, your family might have other needs. So the more that you can control your own destiny, the better. I, I always tell people one of the most important things they can do before joining the school is saving money themselves, even if they have someone else supporting them financially, because that means that they have more control if anything unexpected happens. So, you know, whoever is supporting them, especially the last year or, you know, this year with, with COVID and everything going on, um, so many families, people losing jobs. I think that, you know, it, it's very likely that something will happen at some point. And, you know, a year, it's, it's a long time. So it's, it's good that you were able to like uh, save uh, some of that money. And, and, but, but at the same time, like, were, you, were you living at home uh, or with your girlfriend at that point? Uh, at the time I joined, I was living at my grandmother's place. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have like somewhere to live at the time because before joining, I was working at another city and the company actually oh, provided wow. my, my living. So, and actually that's why I could save more money because I didn't have any, any expenses at the time. Makes sense. But yeah, and then uh, at, in the middle, I was preparing to get married. So I, I actually had a place, I, I bought a place and I started living at the middle of the program here. Oh, wow, all right, all right, all right. Um, I think we'll be talking at, uh, probably one of the student assemblies soon about the importance of having the right environment uh, when mm -hmm. you're working remotely and uh, Microsoft tries to like mimic that environment. So we want to hold you accountable on having a place where you can focus, uh, where there's not a lot of like background noise, because that's what you're going to need when you get to a, jo a job remotely anyway. So it's important, but it's, it's hard for many people to, to get that. So it was great that you were able to get it. Exactly. Uh, I, I had actually two options. I could stay at my parents' home or my grandmother's, but at my parents' home, it was more noisy, you know, and at my grandmother's it was like, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't tell you, but my time zone was a little bit harsh. I had to wake up at 3 a.m. because the program started wow. at 4 a.m. You, so were, you it, were doing the, the European and African time zone. Yes. Yes. Wow, I didn't remember that part. <laughs> oh, wow. But because uh, it was better for me, I, I had more time to meet with my, my fiance. And we, we had to go look for materials to, to build our house and everything. So I, had, I, had, I needed to have that, that time. <laughs> that, that's an amazing story. And by the way, someone, I'm looking at the, the questions that are being mm -hmm. asked uh, in case there is something relevant, you know, to discuss in the moment. Okay. And someone was asking, like, is this a live call or a recorded video? This is a live call. So please, you know, feel free to ask Murillo any questions you, you have. All right. Uh, we, we are here transparently answering whatever you, you asked. So here we are live and, you know, uh, you know, in person talking to you. <laughs> all right. So, uh, you decide to you know transition career to start in the period of a year preparing everything for the big transition uh how did you find about microverse uh how do you find about uh, microverse in in that year before you joined uh how did how did i find about microverse yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay uh it, i was actually searching for some place to learn i was actually learning by myself but there was a big problem uh I wasn't focusing. I I had when I had to study, I didn't have like a fixed time to study, and I didn't know what to study at the time. So I was searching for some place where I could have some guidance and to have some discipline to to focus and study that subject and, and what I needed to become a software developer. So as I was searching, I couldn't find any good schools to study uh, and then a Facebook ad called my attention to microverse and when I read everything it was everything I wanted I, I didn't need the money at that moment 
uh, it was the ISA and it was perfect for me at the time. And the, uh, the, uh, I could study everything I wanted in six months and that's what I needed because I, I actually had money for six months. So, <laughs> well, that's, that's tough, right? Especially for a program like Microverse where like your timing in the program can vary significantly. Some people finish in six months some people like in 12 and, um, it sometimes doesn't depend just on you. It also depends on, you know, your coding partners and mm -hmm. uh, maybe some of the code reviews that you get, it might take like, a little longer. So uh, you, you uh, how long do you take you to finish the program? Uh, six to seven months. Six to seven yes. months. So you were, you were able to make it on time. Yes, yes, the time I, I needed. <laughs> make, 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 makes a lot of sense. So yeah. what uh, other, other than the ISA, was there anything else that, um, made you like decide to go with with my course or, or it was mainly not having to pay up front no it was an international school and i wanted that that experience i wanted to to meet with other people and other cultures uh because that's what uh my my goal to find a job was i wanted an international experience job and microverse was perfect because of that i i met a lot of people from uh uh, a lot of countries and also the because we were pair programming and pair programming for me was very important oh how do you remember your first day at the program yes i do i do my first my first partner was kubilai Kaglayan. oh good I, I, good, I, good first partner to have right yes yes perfect very professional and I think that was awesome just because it was him, because we were always like professional to each other and we were organized uh, and, and his experience was similar to mine. He, he was a food engineer and I was a chemical engineer and we didn't have, we had the same experience with coding, almost to nothing. And we learned together, you know. What, um, how was your experience uh, working with different coding partners? Like where, was there any thing that you noticed that, you know, made it work better for you or worse for you or anything that made you go faster or more slowly or that made you enjoy more or less experience? Okay, the, the, I think the most important thing is communication in this, mm -hmm. because for example, with Kubilai, we were, pretty similar, but I had partners who were slower than me or even faster than me. And we just talked like, okay, I'm slower than you. Can you go a little bit? Uh, can you teach me something that you know that I don't know? And uh, we just uh, exchange experiences, you know? And I think that's what counts, the professionalism, the way you talk to your partner with education, and you're, you're there on time. And if you need to take a break, just say it. Like with Kubilai, I was like uh, in the middle of the session, I, I just told him I need to stretch my legs for 10 minutes and I just go for a walk. And when I got back, I, I don't know, the ideas came faster. <laughs> You know, Not, nothing like a good shower for, you know, to, to be able to deal with the bug in your code that you have been struggling for a while. You go for a walk, for a shower, you come back and, oh, it was so simple, right? But uh, you need. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, there were some technical problems sometimes like a microphone or camera. And uh, we, we just can't understand. I had partners with some microphone issues, but I was, I was just like, okay, take your time. Uh, uh, it's good. We, we can just work like this. And, you know, I, I just understand. And there might be some difficulties, but it's not like all that bad if you just communicate and talk to each other. It also all shows of, a lot. Oh, sorry, girl. I, I, all of my coding partners are my friends right now. <laughs> I just talk to them all the time. I, I love hearing that part. Like, um, and I mean, I'm going back to what you said before, right? Like you said that you were doing courses on your own, but you didn't know exactly what to learn. And it was uh, hard to, you know, have a routine every day. And 
And that's what we tell most of the people who are considering joining my course. Like, we don't think that content to learn is important. It's not necessarily the part where people usually need the most uh, help. It's often that you have the content, but it's really hard to, you know, focus. You can focus for a couple of days, but then when you get stuck, it's easy to like, you know, you lose your motivation, uh, you have distractions around you. So for us, it was all about creating an online environment where on one hand, we can give you this, you know, uh, way of staying, you know, focused all, you know, all day long, while also having this environment being surrounded by people who are very different to you and at least, you know, from different cultures and backgrounds. So you can get the support, but also international exposure. But at the end, the thing that, you know, makes me really, really happy, of course, like it's helping people, but uh, is when I see that people are like, you know, making friends, uh, friends from all parts of the world. That is something that while it's not, you know, necessary for you to like have a good learning experience or for you to like get a good job, is something that I think makes our lives better. So I'm really happy to hear that you got that part of the experience as well. Yeah, exactly. And the plus, the plus is I now have like, I don't know from my head, I think seven or eight partners. I have like all of these contacts and if they get jobs, they can actually refer me to them Absolutely. if they if I ever need it. Absolutely. And I'm sure they all have a really good, you know, opinion of you and they will be happy to recommend you. So yeah, exactly. What, what was the, what would you say was the most important thing that you learned at my course? Uh, professionalism, of course. Professionalism. I think uh, more than technical. Makes sense. What, in which way did you learn, like, you know, professionalism at my course? Okay, to start the environment, I am right now with the white background, for example, and my posture and, yeah. uh, uh, and the way I, I can talk to people comfortably and uh, the interview experience, you know, uh, Microverse has all of these materials and articles they share with us and how to behave in an interview. Uh, and I think that's the most valuable thing about Microverse. Were you, were you working with a career coach uh, when you were like doing all that part of the, the program? Yes, I was working with Jen Bast. When Jen, Jen yes. is the best, yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, great, great. Uh, Jen is like our lead uh, career coach uh, right now and she, yeah, she's, she's awesome working with Yeah, her, when, right? when I was job searching, we had the weekly meetings with the teams and it was like the best part of the week. I don't know, I just love talk to, talk, talking to her. <laughs> Glad to hear that. Other than the, the career coaches, um, which other kind of like support did you get on my course? Okay, yeah. Uh, well, all of the support like from the code reviewers, <laughs> I went, uh, I think that's the most important part, maybe. Uh, so when we finish the projects and they review, they would review our projects, I could ask, uh, ask them any questions and they, they would answer and explain things to me. Uh, like, especially I, I got reviews from the Marias. I mm -hmm. call them the Marias because there, there were two Marias. They're awesome. And they were just awesome, you know? Great. Uh, you, you also asked me right before we started, like, I want to say, Thank you to a few people. Who are they? Okay, yeah. Actually, I would take a, a little while because I, I really want to thank my coding partners. Uh, so Kubilai, Rose Wanjohi, and Sayod. Um, I, I don't know if they're watching. <laughs> and Shabab, and Lucky, Arimu, and uh, Teofilo Kango. And also my stand-up team with Eric, Lori, uh, Felipe, Kartik, and Ikran. Uh, they were all awesome, all, all of them. Yeah, and I so loved being with them. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure that this part of the of the recording gets uh, to, to all of them. Uh, I'm sure they feel the same way about you. So it's, it's so nice that you're taking a couple of minutes to like, you know, like recognize that. Uh, what, like where, so we talk about the, um, co-reviewers we talk about the career coaches briefly um mm -hmm. how important were like your coding partners and your uh like stand-up team members for you know for feeling supported in the program okay the coding partners were important because of technical the technical part uh the i could like 
if there were something I didn't know, they would teach me and vice versa. When you teach, then you are actually learning too. Yeah. Uh, and the stand-up team was amazing here in my, at Microverse because I was like, uh, especially at the beginning when ev everyone were pre presenting the projects they did. Mm -hmm. And because like, for example, I did the YouTube clone and then I saw another one, another person's project and they used JavaScript with the YouTube clone and we didn't learn JavaScript yet, but I actually learned a little bit of JavaScript when I, when I watched it, uh, the presentation of his project. So ex the uh, experience exchange was awesome in the, at the stand-up teams. Did you, did you feel at some point in the program imposter syndrome? Yes, all the time. When I was present, presenting at the stand-up teams, I felt. And uh, when I was doing interviews, all in, in all of the, my interviews, and right now, actually, when uh, before this Lunch and Learn, I was feeling it. Like, I, 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 I don't know if I can help anyone with this Lunch and Learn. I, I, I hope I can. But before that, I was just thinking by myself, like, Am I that good to, to teach someone um, something here? I don't know. I'm just here and trying my best. So I feel it all the time. It's pretty normal. And I, I was gonna say it's normal. And I, and I ask you this question because I, we actually want with this Lunch and Learns, not to like, you know, bring, you know, the most expert people in the world that people we like admire, but you know, it's hard to identify with them we want to know, you want people to know that, you know, like people like humor, like, you know, with normal lives, like their struggles, their ups and downs, that, you know, they, they also make it work. So if you can, like they, they can as well. So um, I think, you know, feeling positive syndrome, it's just part of the journey. By the way, where, uh, where are you working today? Like okay. now? Yeah, I, I'm working at, at a school called Tribe. It's, it's a school just like Microverse, they teach uh, programming, uh, especially web design, of course. Uh, and, and that's it, like here in Brazil. What are, what are you doing at the, the school? Okay, yeah, uh, I'm a coding instructor. So it's like I answer two questions on, on Slack. And I also have some Zoom calls with the students if they have any doubts, uh, twice a day for one hour and a half each. And uh, I'm currently, I'm working in the front end branch, teaching React. Uh, we are actually at the basics of React right now. Uh, and I worked in the fundamentals branch before when I was at the onboarding part, uh, teaching HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But it's not because I, I like front end spe specifically, it's because I'm just, doing the projects as a student, for example, I, didn't, I don't know the content yet, but I, I plan on following like uh, the, through the course as a coding instructor after Makes React sense. with the backend and computer science, yeah. Are you, are you doing like live lectures like, like, or only like, yeah? Yes, live lectures. Are you feeling imposter syndrome doing that? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> And not because of the content, but because uh, we jump in a call with 150 people yeah. and we need to teach everyone uh, something. So it's hard. Right now we have 53 people here and I already feel it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet with 150, it, it feels strong. And you're also like teaching specific things and they're going to be asking you questions. Like I will feel like nervous about it. Um, yeah. How, talking about that, like how, how like at, it sounds like at Microverse, you ended up teaching other people, other people was teaching you, and now you're teaching in a, in a school, how pe people how to code. How does teaching help you as a learner? Oh, uh, everything. Like uh, here at Microverse, for example, before I, I got a job, when I was a student, I was always following all of the messages on full-time students. 
and trying to answer and help other people to, to fix that bug or to find any issues. And when I did that, I learned together with them because for example, most issues, I, I never got them. And I went, I, I would go to Google and search for that issue and help the other person. And when I get, I get that the same issue, I already know the answer because of that. And then uh, as a code reviewer, uh, it's the same experience. I would get some projects with uh, things I didn't use at my own project. And I would learn with those. Uh, and I think that's awesome. Like, and and then, then now as a code instructor, I am learning more, even more. For example, right now I'm teaching the basics of React. And when I learned React, uh, at Microverse, I learned functional components, not class components, because it was the new, new, the newest thing. And right now I'm teaching class components and I'm learning class components because like it's a lot different, you know? Uh, I knew something, but it wasn't solid. Now I'm just solidifying my, my knowledge. It makes sense. They, they, in some schools, they say you watch it once, you do it once, you teach it once. That's the best way to, to learn. And then every time I find myself like, you know, things that I learned in my college experience, and sometimes I have to explain them to people for some reason. And every time I explain them, or like the older I get, and I have to explain them again, I get to, as I explain them, I get to understand them better or different. And I'm like, wow, like I knew so little, even though I thought that I knew about it. So... It's uh yeah, teaching is always uh, a great experience. I think. Yeah, I'm glad exactly. you you're enjoying that. So, uh, I there was actually one question in the in the Q and A, which is, um, are you happy with your job? Of course, yes, I am very very happy uh, to work with education, mostly because of the, the the things we just said. Like, I am learning more and more each day. Cool, cool, awesome to hear that. Um, all right, so. Uh, the question that I have now is, how did, so you were um, a, chemi a chemical engineer before, you switched to something that seemed to be completely different, right? Like in the software world and being a software engineer, did anything from your past experience and your previous education help you with the new experience? Oh, well, not, I think not specifically for a chemical engineer, but for an engineer. <laughs> Uh, because I don't know, I, I think it's the way engineers think. Uh, we are just like organized, too much mm -hmm. organized. I think that organization helped me a lot. Like if you see my desktop right now, it has one folder and the trash. That's it. Like I don't like a lot of icons here at my oh. desktop because I think it's just too disorganized. And uh, I think. You, you really need that in programming. You need to organize our code. You need uh, to understand what you did, for example, a year ago, because and that's why you need to make uh, your code more organized and readable. I think it's just like the methodology is the same with the equations and everything. Makes so sense that the, the square the square mindset of, of the engineer. I'm, a, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm an engineer as well, and I can, I can relate to that. Um, it, was there anything from the, the how, long, how long did you work uh, as a chemical engineer for? A couple of years, uh, right? Two years. Two years. Uh, was there anything from those two years of experience that helped you with your new career? Um, I, don't, I don't remember right now something specifically. Maybe, maybe like, uh, my upper, I, I always like, like I told you, I always liked to automate things. So I had a lot of spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. And so the guy who was there before me took like two hours to do something. And I took 10 minutes because I automated the spreadsheet. Makes sense. Makes sense. So yeah, I think that part actually helped me. Uh, the way you think uh, uh, with the automa automatized things, you know, yeah. Cool. Makes sense. What what does a what does a day at work look like today? Uh, oh, uh, my day at my yeah work yeah yeah right yeah. Now. What is a typical day uh, at Tribe today? Okay, it would be like uh, we I, I start at ten a.m. Hmm. 
and we have some meetings to prepare for the day. So we prepare what we are going to teach mm -hmm. all of the students. Uh, and then we have a lot, uh, some other meetings. Uh, and for example, at 13, we have the Zoom call with the students. And then the students start working, start, start studying at 2 p.m. Uh, and I, uh, at, at the, in the afternoon, they have the, the live lecture. And sometimes I participate in that. I'm, I don't actually give the live lectures. I just, uh, I just stay in the Zoom call uh, if they have any doubts, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's live, but it's not like I, I don't teach them directly. I just answer to the doubts cool. they have from the, the live lecture. Cool, 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 cool. Perfect. Um, all right. So last question here is, what is some advice that you would like to, to share with um, other members of my careers or people who are thinking about transitioning careers or joining my careers? Like, um, what, what piece of advice do you have for them? Okay, it's that. That's uh, I, I would give a pretty standard advice. It's like to never give up searching for the job. I spent four months, uh, a little bit less maybe, looking for a job, and it's not easy. Uh, if you take a look at my Hunter board, I have like two hundred applications, and all of them were like if they are they were not rejected they weren't answered and that's pretty normal and yeah and i i think that's the the, the advice i want to give them like just don't give up just keep on going you will reach the the job you you want yeah. and oh actually don't send applications everywhere choose the applications you want because i made that mistake I was applying everywhere, and, and the, sometimes I, I would jump to I, I would jump to an interview, to a job I didn't even want, you know, and be, just because I got the interview, and I was just, why am I here? I guess the only advantage of that is getting some practice and interviewing, but uh, at the same time, you might be wasting your time if you do that too much, right? Yeah, just just go on prem and practice on prem. Cool. For the people who don't know what PRAMP is, it's a platform okay. that, that we use internally, but you can access it, you know, even if you're not a micro student, uh, where you can find other people to, like to practice interviews uh, with. So it's a super cool tool and it's, uh, it's free or, you know, it's with a, a credit system so that the more you do it for other people, the more you will get, you know, interviews that done for you. So um, awesome, awesome tool to recommend to everyone. Yeah, awesome. All right, so we have, um, you know, like more than like 15 minutes for, for questions. So by the way, I hear some questions and I, I see some questions that are specific about my careers. Um, so for example, like, you know, when will the next class start? And remember, we, we start a class every five weeks and there is in, in our FAQ, you can go to support.mycareers.org. If you search like, when will the next class start? Like we have all the answers there. Um, so I'm gonna start looking for some of the, the ones that are specific uh, for you, Murillo. So what do I look for? Uh, this is a more general question, but uh, what do I look for as a suitable job and where? I'm 38 years old and I have a wife and two kids and need income part-time, coaching, coding, et cetera. I have 12 years of experience. I took a gap uh, from coding by being an agile product owner for four or five years. Now I'm jobless because uh, you can easily drop uh, a VA, PO, PM to cut costs, but not a developer. Uh, so the micro course will grind me back to, a, you know, a worker life as a software engineer, loving it now and hope to graduate ASAP. So I guess the question is, you know, what do I look for as a suitable, suitable job and where? Um, I don't know really if you have an answer for that. Okay, if I understood correctly, you are already a pro programmer, right? Yeah, and it sounds like this person is uh, going through micro course or thinking about joining micro course. Okay, okay. So he took a gap for for five, four to five years. Uh, and maybe, it, it, okay. So Microverse uh, teaches web development and uh, they teach uh, the latest technologies, the, the most uh, asked in the market. And I think it's it, it would be great to, to just join Microverse and learn, for example, React 
uh, because I, I don't know like four or five years gap. I think you don't know React, right? So I think it would be very interesting to get to not only the technical parts to learn the latest technologies, but also the professionalism. I think that's very important. The, the, yeah, one of the most important parts of the program. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I think that for some of the more senior people who join my careers, uh, by the way, the, the average salary when they graduate, is usually, statistically speaking, much higher. Uh, and the benefits that I'm seeing on those people is one, you know, mo a, mo a more modern, like, you know, tech stack, like in this case, you know, React, mm -hmm. JavaScript, and maybe Rails. Uh, but most importantly is for people who have had like just a local experience in the micros, they can get all the, you know, best and good practices of working remotely in an international team. So combined with the previous experience, um, it, it really helps you uh, stand out and, and be able to access international opportunities. So like, yeah, I couldn't agree more with you there. Yeah. And, and Microverse provides a lot of links to a lot of web uh, websites with uh, job searching uh, opportunities. Cool. So the next question is a short one. How long did it take you to complete my course? Yeah, okay. It was six to seven months. Cool. And then how long to get the job? Uh, four months. Cool. Roughly. Perfect. Yeah. All right, the next question is from Amrit. And he asks, okay, it's nice to hear you guys. Uh, I'm from India. I had a question regarding the selection process of microverse. I wanted to ask how important is the past educational background to, the, to get selected in microverse? Is it essential to have a degree in any field because I am just 19 years old and I don't have any. And I just think that I should directly pursue these microverse course rather than investing my time and my money in college. Um, I have my own answer to that. What do you think, Murillo? Okay, yeah, I, I, I think you, you don't really need any background in programming. Uh, you can take the pre-course work and uh, learn the basics just to do the coding challenges. And then you will learn everything you need here at Microverse. You just need to, 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 to research a lot. You know, uh, Google is there to help you. Uh, and you will need that in your future job for sure. For sure. Google will be your best friend for the program and for the rest of your life as a developer. Google yes. and Mr. Stack Overflow or Mrs. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> um, so like uh, just answering the kind of the official response that like we don't look at your uh, previous education uh, to decide if you join or not uh, my course. Like we, we ask about it for like, you know, statistical like, you know, analysis, but it's not a requirement at all. And I was just talking about, I don't know, um, really if he had the chance, I think he was in the school before you were. Um, uh, if you like um, Juan um, from Colombia. Uh, anyway, he, he's another one who is like, he was 18 when he joined my course. He's 19 now. He got a job, an amazing job in Colombia. And then the company kind of like shut down for different reasons. And he just got a new job working internationally. Uh, really, you know, good salary. And I was talking to him last week. And it's amazing to see someone who is like 19, you know, fresh out of uh, high school, not college, right? You know, being successful. So yes, like age is not a problem at all. So you should definitely consider doing this. Uh, as Murillo said, if you can pass the, you know, the coding challenges with the, you know, the preparation that the, the pre-course work gives you, like you, you're going to be good to go. Right. Next question is, uh, okay, my name is Gideon and I have a question regarding attending courses on microverse. I have trouble obtaining internet on a daily basis due to my location. Is it possible that I can still attend microverse and try to maintain a constant, but not a daily basis attendance? Um, what do you think, Murillo? Well, I think internet is very important in the at the in the course uh, in a daily basis. I, I I what what do you have to say to that? Uh, really? uh, I, I was curious to hear your answer, uh, just to make sure that, you know, it's consistent with mine, but I know I, absolutely. In fact, you know, uh, unfortunately, and I know, we know that a lot of people don't necessarily have the financial support to join the school full time, a stable internet connection. And we do have plans to be able to help with that in, in the future. But as of today, we require that you join like, you know, daily for eight hours a day. So you need to have a stable internet connection and you will need that for the day that you get a job anyway, right? For a remote job, you need to have internet connection every day. So I know that it's not that easy, but whatever you can start doing today 
to okay. find a place and um, you know, maybe it's some kind of like local nonprofit that believes in you that can give you access to like a place with internet connection. I know the realities of different people are so, so different. So I don't want to assume that I know what getting what your reality is. But as of today, on like, like we ask that you have, you know, um, an internet connection Monday through Friday and and like availability to join full time. That that will change in the future, but as of today, that uh, that's a requirement. And the you know the uh, the admissions process is not designed for that yet. But the first month in the program, which Murillo, we have changed it completely since October. The first month of the program now has you know daily, daily deadlines, and you can only meet if you're working eight hours a day, sometimes even in the morning. And you know, um, what that's allowing us is that if someone is like, well, you know, I think that I don't have a single internet connection, but I wanna try, we detect that super quickly. And what we are seeing is like in the past, you know, some people in micro, they join a little by little, some of them were like falling here. And now they all, if they cannot really, uh, you know, engage fully with the experience, we ask them to leave on the first week, but after that, it's been super stable uh, in terms of you know the experience for the peers and all of that. So, you know, it, it, I, I wish I could say like just uh, Gideon, you you can join today, but probably not not yet, right? Uh, but we will be working on our side. Um, whatever you can do on your side to get you ready for this uh, will will help you. All right, we have a question also here that is like uh, there is there are many different professions uh, that have to do with coding. Uh, why web development and not data scientist or, you know, software engineer or game developer? Uh, why did you choose a like, web development instead? Well, uh, because I have, uh, I, I, at the beginning, I think I mentioned that I had some contact with uh, web development in the past when I was 15. And uh, despite I didn't uh, go forward with that course, I really enjoyed it. And well, I we, a web developer can do a lot of things, uh, and I, I think it's great. I just love uh, going to a website or a web app and seeing uh, everything that that's there, and imagine how the 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 person behind it did that. And I don't know. I just I like it. It makes sense. I was going to say there are so many jobs in all those like, you know, kind of like subcategories of software engineering that at the end, the most important thing is pick something that you really love. Right. Yes, and, uh, exactly. And, and also we learn phaser and phaser is a game we can build in our browser. And I really like games and uh, well, it's not limited with we, we can build games in the browser. I was talking to to one of the coaches today, to Crystal, and and she told me that uh, she had a session with an, a student who was at the end of the program who just had an interview doing .NET. And of course, we don't teach .NET at Microverse. And he was like, oh, like, uh, Crystal, I cannot believe I was asked to complete this coding challenge in .NET. And I realized that uh, as I started looking at the code, I realized that it was so similar to Ruby that actually I was able to solve it in .NET, even, even though I've never coded in .NET before. So I think that's a very important skill. By the way, for stuff like data science, that, that's different, right? But yes. for actually with like, you know, coding, what, the first language, it's like with any kind of like spoken language, the first one is the hardest one to like, you know, the, well, I guess the second one is like spoken languages, but in like the first one you learn as an adult is the hardest one. And after that, it gets easier and easier and easier. And the more you learn, the faster you can learn new ones. And I can confirm that because I already did an interview with Go language, you know, yeah. GoLang. And it was like, I was just researching for uh, syntax and nothing else. Uh, I just needed the syntax, but it was pretty similar to how we build objects and classes and similar to Ruby and JavaScript. They're, they're all just, Similar. They have a lot of things in common. And there, there are some like different parada paradigms, like, you know, like, like, like functional programming that they force mm -hmm. you to think differently. But at the end, like knowing one language will accelerate your process of learning other ones very uh, a lot. And most I, like uh, companies like do prefer if you know the language they work with. But if you can show that you're a really strong developer in another language and, and that you're a good eager learner, they will, you know, probably give you the job because they know that you can learn the new language pretty quickly. So, you know, I always say don't optimize which language you choose, optimize 
choosing one and going really deep, but whatever you choose, like, is not what's going to make the most difference in your career. Exactly. I, I know micronauts that are working with Scala, for example. <laughs> that's, a, that, that, that's a very different one. Huh? Yeah. So, uh, just like uh, to confirm here, um, when uh, did you join the program? How long did it take you to find a job? Uh, did knowing Python help you find a job faster, do you think? No. <laughs> well, it, it, it helped me learn JavaScript maybe because it was like algorithms. I already knew some, but I, I truly uh, learned at Microverse. All right. Um, perfect. And uh, just so you can feel like you joined the program on February of last year, right? Yes. And then it took like six months to complete the program and almost four months uh, until you got the job. Yes, exactly. Perfect. All right. Okay, there's a very interesting question here and I'm super curious to hear your answer. Like a defined question. Uh, why did you pick my careers instead of uh, the other Brazilian competitors like Tribe or Kensi? Will you make up the same choice again if you were to choose again? Why? Uh, by the way, I, I, I want to be super transparent. I, I told Murillo, please do not feel like you need to answer positive things about my I, I want you to be completely honest here. So I'm curious to hear um, what your response is. Okay. So um, actually, I didn't know Tribe when I joined Microverse, okay, to be honest. But even if I did, I would choose Microverse because of the international experience and the way the program is, pair programming instead of, because at Tribe, they give live lectures and they, they already have the content you need to learn. But at Microverse, you can, you, you, as you have a coding partner, you learn with each other and you learn how to learn by yourself. You don't depend on other people to learn. And that's how the, your job will be. You will have, of course, you will have your colleagues, but maybe they won't know what you need and you need to do it by yourself. And that's what Microverse teaches us to learn by ourselves with some help with uh, from Microverse, of course. Well, we, um, I, I was just, so, I, I've been talking a lot about this recently, finding the balance between uh, as a school, right? Or as a teacher, how do you find the balance between providing support when people need support without providing support when providing that support can take away a learning opportunity, right? And if someone has been stuck for 10 days with the same problem, well, that, that is obvious, an obvious case where you need to support that person. Uh, but if someone has been struggling with something for like, you know, five minutes, uh, just to take it to, a, to another extreme, most likely that person still needs to spend some time because when you get to a job, you can't just, you know, ask every single question, like figuring things out by yourself is part of the job and you need to be learning new things every single day as a developer. Um, so anyway, I'm super, super, you know, happy to, to hear that because we always say that we are like Ruby, Ruby Rails, React are like things that it's, are important for the market today, but the market is changing all the time. So at the end, the most important thing is for you to like learn how to learn because you're gonna be doing that for the rest of your life. So um, uh, happy to, to hear that, that answer, but also for everyone else, you know, considering uh, education uh, is not a cost, it's an investment, right? So you have to think about what are you gonna get in exchange uh, for the time and the money that you're gonna be putting uh, into, into the process. So I think you need to look at, okay, what do you expect to get back? And what is the school or the way? Because you can do a lot of this stuff by yourself if you have you know, a really high level of you know, uh, self-control and motivation. Um, some things, like other things, you can learn them uh, alone, like you know, working with people who are very different to you. Uh, but you have to analyze all the options and at the end, you know, uh, find the one that works for you and for the goals that you want uh, in your life. And we do have, I don't know if other schools have, but we do have things like the practice sessions that you can join when you are applying to join the school. They're super fun. They're on the weekends. You get to like practice per programming with people from all around the world. They are free. Uh, they are part of the admissions process. Also the trials where you get to like build one project with uh, three different people. Uh, that's another great way. And, you know, after that, you might decide, oh, this is not for me. I'm going to go and, you know, consider other schools. So um, find, find whatever works for you. It's like choosing the coding language, right? It's like whatever works for you is what, what you should be like choosing. Um, all right, we, we have to like uh, just close here because we're um, out of time. 
Uh, and I know that for the people who are, uh, you know, micro students or like micronauts, even if they have graduated already, uh, you can find each other on Slack. But for those of, of uh, who are like listening today, who are not on micro yet, how can they like connect with you if they want to ask you a question or just you know follow your your journey as a, as a software engineer? Okay, uh, I think you can actually send me an email. I can just type my email somewhere uh, in the chat uh, or LinkedIn. Have, actually, right? maybe LinkedIn I can, would be better. I can. I have your links right here if you want. I can put oh, them in the chat. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, is it okay to share your email address? Yes, yes. Cool. Email, I'll LinkedIn. Put it there, and then I'll, I'll share. I always have this ready just in case. But I always ask because, you know, different people use different, you know, kind of uh, social media platforms like uh, to engage with other people. But I, I just mm -hmm. would share your LinkedIn profile. Um, all, right. all right. Well, Marilla, thank you so much for, for sharing your experience. Uh, it's always, you know, we're trying to build a school that can help a lot of people. But I always say that what keeps me going every day is every time I get to talk to one of you at a time and hear about your experience and how happy you are at your job. So like, thank you for giving me the, you know, the, the opportunity to hear uh, from directly from you. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of the people who are uh, joining today also are very grateful for all, you know, hearing from your experience and in such an honest uh, way. So again, thanks a lot. And and congrats for, for all you have accomplished so far. Okay, thank you, Ariel, and thank you, everyone that's listening. I wish you all the best and good luck and success. All of you will get what you want eventually, I'm sure, if you work hard. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we'll see you for the last, last, next Lunch and Learn. Bye, everyone. Bye.